Hey everybody, I'm Brian, and I would like to do a full-on tribute to Ed Wood by looking at his work from start to finish. So, let's get things started and go back to the very beginning. Ed Wood was born in Poughkeepsie, New York in 1924. He fell in love with the movies very early. In 1931, he went to see Dracula. In 1936, he received his first movie camera, a Kodak Cine Special, for his 12th birthday. One of the first things he shot was the airship Hindenburg passing over the Hudson River at Poughkeepsie before its fiery demise in Lakehurst, New Jersey. Ed Wood and the Hindenburg. Now there's a theory that nobody's ever brought up when talking about the Hindenburg disaster. Let's see. Humanoid aliens and string-powered UFOs. Hmm. You're not even dressed yet. You know we have a very important appointment in exactly ten minutes. Well, it'll only take me ten seconds. They don't call me Magic Man for nothing. I'm now off to visit the best men's store in town. Oh, I've seen you do this a hundred times, but it always frightens me. Oh, where are you? Here I am. They have quick and dependable service at my men's store. The latest in styles, too. Ed's first movie that still survives is 1948's Crossroads of Laredo. Crossroads of Laredo is a film version of the old cowboy ballad Streets of Laredo. The film is silent and clocks in at about 22 minutes. The plan was to go back later and dub dialogue and cowboy music which was done in 2005 by Ed's ex-girlfriend, Dolores Fuller. But at the time, Ed and his producer, John Crawford, ran out of money. In fact, Ed nearly bankrupt John Crawford. Ed plays a cowboy who gets killed at the beginning of the film. Crossroads of Laredo is your typical white hat versus black hat type western, and feels a lot like the old Tom Mix movies from the 20s. Next up, we have a TV melodrama from 1951, The Sun Was Setting. The Sun Was Setting was shot at KTTV Studios on Sunset Boulevard during the week of December 17, 1951. The plot revolves around a woman, played by Angela Stevens, who is dying in her New York apartment. Two friends visit, and she tells of her desire to go to Chinatown in the village. They attempt to change her mind. After they leave, the woman, unable to bear her confinement, leaves the room and dies. The film also stars ex-cowboy star Tom Keene. And for all you Superman fans, the woman's friend is played by Phyllis Coates, TV's first Lois Lane. Ed followed The Sun Was Setting with The Lawless Rider, a western starring Johnny Carpenter and TV's other Lois Lane, Noel Neal. The Lawless Rider is one of a number of westerns that Ed made during this period. In fact, in 1950, he took part in the picture The Baron of Arizona, starring Vincent Price. A woman in that picture falls off of a cart, and Ed was her stunt man, woman. Uh, well, anyway, he was in full drag. Next up, he made a picture called The Crossroad Avenger. Crossroad Avenger, The Adventures of the Tucson Kid from 1953, was Ed's attempt to break into TV. It is the only Ed Wood production of the 50s in color and has quite a few forgotten cowboy stars in the cast. Men like Tom Keene, Tom Tyler, Lyle Talbot, and Kenny Duncan all make appearances in this film. Now that you got my guns and you have me covered, mind telling me what this is all about? What's your name, mister? Duke. Duke Smith. A lot of Dukes around lately. Funny thing is, they all seem to end in Smith. Duke Smith is good enough for the time being. And now that the formalities are over, I'm asking again. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? Actor Tom Tyler is best known as the original Captain Marvel and for the Mummy sequels of the 1940s. 
Ed first met Tom Tyler when he was out drunk driving one day and accidentally hit somebody. He got out of the car and apologized profusely, got the man into the car, said he would take him home, and as they were driving, Ed looked over and realized who it was. And he said, oh my God, you're Tom Tyler. Next up, we have Glenn or Glenda from 1953, which was shot at Jack and Helen Miles Larchmont Studios under the title Behind Locked Doors, Transvestite, or I Changed My Sex. It had different names for different territories. Glenn or Glenda was a film that was close to Ed's heart because it's loosely based on his own life. Ed was a transvestite, and the original plan for the film was that it was to be a biopic on Christine Jorgensen, who was the first sex change operation. Ed decided to make his own movie. In the last few minutes of the film, it actually does show a sex change operation, but that's only about five minutes long. Ed stars as Glenn, who is engaged to Barbara, who is played by Dolores Fuller, his then real-life girlfriend, who doesn't know that Glenn likes to wear women's clothes. The plot mostly revolves around Glenn and his struggles with trying to find a way to tell Barbara about his other self. From Bela Lugosi is God to the devil showing up at his wedding, Ed Wood's Glenn or Glenda is a very surreal film. It's part documentary, part horror film, part love story, part I have no idea. But if you're gonna buy Glenn or Glenda, I highly recommend the Angora set on VHS from Rhino Home Video because it has about five minutes extra footage that the DVD from Image Entertainment doesn't have. Next up we have Jailbait from 1954. Jailbait is about a gangster who has his face altered by a plastic surgeon to escape the law. Jailbait stars Lyle Talbot, Dolores Fuller, Steve Reeves in his very first movie role, and Mona McKinnon. Mona McKinnon was Ed's wife for about a day. On their wedding night, he came out wearing her nightgown and the marriage kind of ended abruptly. Mona did, however, play the stewardess in Plan 9 from Outer Space. It actually reminds me a lot of the old crime comic books from the 1950s from EC Comics. The film cost $22,000, and the stock footage of the blackface singer in the middle of the film was actually borrowed footage from a film called Yes Sir, Mr. Bones. Next up, from 1955, we have Bride of the Monster. Bride of the Monster was Ed Wood's only big money maker. It's what you would call a typical Cold War era film, with Bela Lugosi playing a mad scientist who wants to take over the world by making atomic supermen. He has succeeded once making a giant octopus that he feeds his failed experiments to. He also has a mute giant named Lobo who does his bidding. The owner of a meat packing plant financed the film under two conditions. One, that his son could have a part in the film, he plays the hero, and two, that the film would end in a giant explosion. I will perfect my own race of people. A race of atomic supermen which will conquer the world. <laughs> Our next film is The Violent Years from 1956. This is one of many films from the 1950s dealing with teenage delinquency. Ed didn't direct The Violent Years. It was directed by William M. Morgan, but Ed Wood did write the whole screenplay. The film stars Gene Moorhead and Barbara Weeks. Gene Moorhead was Playboy's Miss October, 1955. The picture was based on an original story by B.L. Hart titled Teenage Killers, The Violent Years and it was originally slated for release as Girl Gang Terrorists and Teenage Girl Gang. 
The director was recruited from television and died a few years after the film was made. It was re-released in 1966 as Female. These fool kids, when will they learn? These aren't kids. These are morons. Now we come to my favorite of Ed Wood's pictures, Plan 9 from Outer Space, filmed in 1956 and not released until 1959. In 1994's Ed Wood, directed by Tim Burton, Johnny Depp as Ed Wood states, This is it. This is the one I'll be remembered for. True words were never spoken. Plan 9 from Outer Space is without a doubt the most famous Ed Wood film. The story revolves around aliens who have noticed that the Earth people are getting close to discovering a bomb that could wipe out all the life in the universe. The aliens have been trying to get our attention eight times already, and so for their ninth plan they've come up with something that's sure to do the trick. They will bring back our dead and turn them against us. In their failed attempt at a zombie apocalypse, the aliens only bring back three dead. An old man, played by Bela Lugosi, who sadly died before filming began, so Ed used stock footage and his wife's chiropractor to finish the scenes with his cape over his face. The ghoul's wife, played by TV horror host Vampyra, and a police chief, played by Swedish wrestler Tor Johnson. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well, as long as they can think, we'll have our problems. The footage that Ed shot of Bella in the graveyard and outside of his house was footage that Ed planned to use in a film called The Ghoul Goes West, which would have mixed horror, comedy, and the Western genres. In fact, Ed had Western star Gene Autry already interested in a role. Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. Now we have a short film from 1957 called The Final Curtain, which I consider to be a major missed opportunity. Final Curtain was the script that Bela Lugosi was reading when he died. Duke Moore was later given the role. Final Curtain was a pilot episode for an attempt to make an anthology series called Portraits in Terror. Parts of Final Curtain later turned up in Night of the Ghouls. The producer of the film, Ernest Moore, was Duke Moore's brother. Final Curtain remained one of Ed's favorite films. The knob on this door feels the same as the rail on the staircase. But this time, I am ready for the clammy sensation. Next up, we have another one that Ed only wrote the script for. It was directed by Adrian Weiss. It's called The Bride and the Beast from 1958. Bride and the Beast follows a couple on their wedding night. Laura is curiously attracted to a pet gorilla in her husband's cellar. Through hypnosis, it is revealed that in a previous incarnation she was the Queen of the Gorillas. The original title for The Bride and the Beast was Queen of the Gorillas. The assistant director, Harry Frazier, an associate of Ed's, directed many PRC westerns in the 40s, as well as Chained for Life an exploitation picture starring Violet and Daisy Hilton, the Siamese twins who also appeared in Todd Browning's Freaks. What's interesting about The Bride and the Beast is that it's a ridiculous story, yet Ed still finds a way to put a reference to Angora into the script. Next up we have Night of the Ghouls from 1958. Night of the Ghouls is a loose sequel to Bride of the Monster. In fact, there are some that say that Plan 9 from Outer Space, Bride of the Monster, and Night of the Ghouls are part of a trilogy, the Kelton the Cop trilogy, named for the character played by Paul Marco. Ed couldn't afford to pay to have the film processed, so the film wasn't released until long after his death. The story revolves around huckster psychics tricking the loved ones of the recently deceased into thinking they've had contact with them. Real ghosts emerge, and it goes from there. The film leaves a bit to be desired. There's a scene in the picture in which you see Ed Wood fighting with friend Conrad Brooks. This footage was from a failed production called Rock and Roll Hell. The fight scene was lifted and put into this picture. Ed was never one to waste good footage. We now begin Ed's descent into pornography with 1960's The Sinister Urge. The Sinister Urge was written and directed by Ed. 
and is about cops trying to bust up a pornography racket. The original title for the film was Racket Queen. The film was shot in four days in Jerome Lepre's Rocket Studios on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. Ed's salary for directing The Sinister Urge was $1,000 plus a bonus. So we are now well into the 60s and into Ed Wood's porn career. I'm not really going to talk about them too much because some of them are kind of disturbing. But I will talk about 1965's Orgy of the Dead. This is, without a doubt, the most ridiculous movie I have ever seen in my entire life. The VHS box promises naked spirits, topless dancers, and werewolves. Well, they definitely aren't lying. You also have a mummy and a bizarre psychic, played by Criswell, sitting on a fog machine and saying some of the weirdest dialogue you'll ever hear. The plot of this film follows a couple in search of a cemetery so the man can be inspired to write a horror story. They get in a car crash and are taken prisoner by the ruler of the dark and are forced to watch a seemingly endless array of topless spirits. The only reason to watch this movie is because of Criswell. I am Criswell. For years I have told the almost unbelievable, related the unreal, and showed it to be more than a fact. Now I tell a tale of the threshold people so astounding that some of you may think this is a story of those in the twilight time. Once human, now monsters in a void between the living and the dead. Monsters to be pitied. Monsters to be despised. The very last film I'm going to mention is a film that is based off of the screenplay that Ed Wood was writing when he died. I woke up early the day I died, which came out in 1998. It stars Billy Zane as a madman who escapes from an insane asylum, robs a bank, hides the money, loses the money, and has to find it. The film also stars Bertha Kitt, Nicolette Sheridan, Vampira, Ron Perlman, and John Ritter. It has a lot of themes that you'll find in other Ed Wood pictures, such as graveyards, transvestitism, Angora, and, well, everything. Well, I apologize for the odd camera angle right now, but uh, my camera ran out of batteries. But uh, what's an Ed Wood tribute without film flubs? Well, I hope you enjoyed my look at Ed's work. Thank you and good night. It is safe to state that the grandchildren of some of the people in this theater will not be born on Earth. They come from the bowels of hell, a transformed race of walking dead, zombies guided by a master plan for complete domination of the earth. Plan 9.